we also made a decision that to attract new customers to this space, you had to look and feel and talk to the customers like you're an airline. Booking had to be similar. Uh, the process had to be simple. You had to give a price that wasn't variable on how, how long the flight's going to take. It's just a fixed price. That was new to the business. Now everybody's doing that. But that was very new to the business when we launched. So we want to look and feel like an airline, but we are not giving you the airline experience because you get to choose the time you want to go, where you want to go. And there's, you know, not a, there's no long lines at the airport to get, you know, to get out in the plane. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leumitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Opus Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Hello and welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today, I'm with Andrew Schmertz, the CEO of Hopscotch Air, an FAA certified air taxi operator. Hopscotch Air is a transformative air carrier delivering private aviation at affordable prices. He is a frequent commentator on aviation and small business issues and previously was a contributor to PBS NewsHour and an anchor of the Business Week TV show. Andrew Schwartz, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? Uh, I'm good, Michael, and thank you for having me. Looking forward to the talk. Oh, I am so looking forward to it. We're going to be talking about one of the more uh, exciting industries that we have in the world today, literally uh, air taxi operations, uh, which is, you know, it's, I'm, I'm astounded that we're actually sitting here talking about it and I'm introducing it as a, as a sort of a category and something that, you know, we're already talking about and really is a transforming the, our world. And so I'm, I'm excited to talk to you as the CEO of Hopscotch Air. And um, you have quite a, quite a, quite an interesting background besides air taxing, which I'm excited to learn about as well. And, um, and so we're going to be spending these next 20 minutes dive into your world and your path. And so again, thank you very much for being here. What is it between you and planes or flying things? <laughs> well, um, so first let me start by saying, I think the word passion is misused in business. Let's save the word passion for the bedroom. Uh, I think it's about dedication and force of will to get through the daily challenges, especially in the airline industry where there's daily, where there's hourly challenges, often the same challenges at the same time every single day. And by having that dedication and that force of will, you project that onto your employees, onto your partners, onto your customers, and onto your vendors. And that's really key when you face challenges, they will all rally around and support the business. <laughs> My personal story with airplanes, about a, about a dozen years ago, I, you know, I was a private pilot, just flying around recreationally. And my business partners, who I went to college with, and I decided, you know, we looked at the environment, we looked at the aviation space and, the, and that environment and decided that this category is one that we could enter and we can grow and we could eventually dominate. And therefore, I sh shifted my career. I was working in media. I was a television reporter here in New York City for a number of years. And that, ha that helps in this business as well because it helps with marketing. Uh, I'm an attorney as well. That can't hurt, uh, <laughs> though I don't like to talk about being that too much. Uh, but we decided to launch uh, this new type of, of industry, and we certified the airline from the ground up. We worked diligently with the FAA. That's unusual. Many companies buy uh, an air certificate, or many companies broker out flights but don't actually operate the aircraft. We operate the aircraft, and it's a branded operation. Every one of our planes has our name on it. All the pilots wear Hopscotch Air shirts, and that's unusual in the on-demand private aviation space. I love it. I love the background and I love the sort of the way that you're framing the way that the space looks. Tell me a little bit about private, um, you know, private flying and the air taxi operations. Is this a new phenomenon? Is this a growing phenomenon? What's happening around the world with this? 
So, so it's kind of a split phenomenon. You could always show up to the airport and find somebody to fly you somewhere. So there's always been right. a private aviation component, especially here in the United States. Uh, I know in Tel Aviv, Israel, the private aviation is also growing, uh, and it's growing throughout Africa, by I, the way, uh, by, by, by leaps and I bounds. I also have private pilot here, but, it's, oh, uh, but, okay. but I haven't yet flown people. Yeah, well, I flew <laughs> friends, but I haven't flown commercially yet. <laughs> I'll ask you the typical question, what, what planes do you fly? I a Cessna 172. I know it well. It's a great plane. So yes, uh, on on the what what we've done is we were looking at a market of how to expand the number of people who could fly on a private aircraft because, as you know, a small percentage of the population that can afford to fly privately ever does. And what we developed is a regional on-demand air taxi service. We never use the word charter. We are technically a charter company by regulation, but we never use the word charter because charter suggests that Kim Kardashian is going to get on the plane uh, and you're going to have champagne and caviar. None of that. We provide a utilitarian service and we do that by flying small piston <clears throat> aircraft, Cirrus aircraft, four-seater aircraft, playing with the parachute, you may have seen it. And we fly on regional routes, uh, largely in New York. So our biggest route is, is New York, let's say Westchester County to Nantucket. Uh, and we serve a customer base that's both leisure customers and business customers. So let's say you need to fly to Ithaca and that's about an hour and a half flight. No, about an hour and 10 minute flight from New York and come back for your son's soccer game at night. You can do that with Hopscotch Air. And you could do that at a price point that is about two thirds less than traditional charter flying. So we're really, yes. we're really competing against the car because you could drive everywhere we fly to. So we're competing against the car and we're competing against the regional airlines, which in the United States, the regional airlines have, have largely collapsed over the past couple of years. Well, so how, how do you actually, you know, operate as a business? I'm, I'm so, you know, this is a, it, it seems like it's a. So it's really interesting for me as, a, as an entrepreneur thinking about what it's like to run it and air and an air tax business just because it's it just just sounds different. I, yeah. It's hard to explain even why. No, you know, it, it is different and it's exciting. So you know, when I show up to a bar and talking to somebody, they all want to talk about flying. There's certainly an excitement to the aviation space. Yeah, the business how to run the business is we made some strategic decisions early on. We were going to be a branded operation, which means that all of our customers are our customers. We're not relying on brokers right. to give us the flight. So about 95% of our customers are organic. They're grown, homegrown by us. We are also heavily marketed. We believe in marketing uh, aggressively and with a sales force that is different than the traditional charter company. So we really believe we're running an airline. We also made a decision that to attract new customers to this space, you had to look and feel and talk to the customers like you're an airline. Booking had to be similar. Uh, the process had to be simple. You had to give a price that wasn't variable on how, how long the flight's going to take. It's just a fixed price. That was new to the business. Now everybody's doing that. But that was very new to the business when we launched. So we want to look and feel like an airline, but we are not giving you the airline experience because you get to choose the time you want to go, where you want to go, and there's you know not a, there's no long lines at the airport to get you know to get out in the plane. I want to defer on this point for a second because this is a, it's a really interesting one. So I would assume that part of the magic of you know going through a service like Hopscotch Air. Is the fact that you don't have the traditional, you know, airline experience of booking, and then some. I, I can I can intuitively assess why you know you why you found that to be impactful, but but I'd love to hear it from you. You know, what was what what were sort of the key understandings from a consumer behavior standpoint that made it clear to you that that this is how the the framing should be on and the messaging. Ease of use. So if you were to charter an aircraft in the United States. It's not an easy process. You probably need your executive assistant to pick up the phone and call a multiple number of brokers, get a number of quotes in, and then you kind of decide which one you want. That was not the system we were aiming for. We were talking not just to executive assistants, but we're talking to the actual passengers who are flying on our planes. 
and they want ease of system. They wanted to know, they want to know, are you available and how much it's going to cost me? And those two answers derive whether people will book. And of course, they ask safety questions too, uh, which, which we can very easily answer. So the, 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 Customer typically wants to know those three components, but by the time they get to the safety question, uh, and you know, most customers who fly for the first time ask questions about the pilot, about the plane, what's your safety protocols. By the time they get to that question, we know they will book. And we know they will book because we've already provided them that, yes, we can do the flight, and here's the price. So as ease of use, we want to reduce the friction in the business. There's too much friction in private aviation right now. All right. How do you build that trust with the customer? When I go on the big plane and I see those, you know, fancy pilots that are, you know, there, there's a lot of swag and there's a lot of prestige and I, and I feel important that I'm getting on this big, big flying bird. It feels very safe, right? I know that I had to, to, to explain to my passengers, you know, exactly what's going to happen because that plane is small and it's going to shake and you feel the turbulence and you hear the engine pretty loud. Right. And so how, how do you, what, what is sort of the process that you go through to build this trust with new consumers? Because once you get on so, it the first uh, time, it's beautiful. That's right. So, so that's exactly right. So first the Cirrus is not a particularly uh, turbulent aircraft. It's, it's very stable in the air, Yeah, but it is yeah. exactly what you just said. It's the first time experience to determine whether they come back and whether they feel that you're trustworthy. So there's two avenues of trust, safety and whether you can deliver the service that they're expecting. On that latter point, uh, we need to always do better because we're in a business where we land, turn, and go. We are flying these aircraft every hour during, you know, 12 hours a day, for example. We are, they're, they're, they're always on the move. That results in delays. So you want to be on time. You want to provide the service that people expect that they're going to get for the price points they're going to get. The safety aspect, it comes down to how the pilots present themselves, the, uh, safety procedures that we have in place, the pre-flight briefings, for example. You know, you get into your Cessna 172, you could just decide to go fly. That's not Hopscotch Air. Yep. We're operating a much higher level of safety in that we have multiple people along the chain that can stop a flight at any time. So any flight can't go without our chief pilot or director of operations or one of their designees determining that the flight can be safe. That's from a weather standpoint. That's from an airport standpoint. That's from a weight and balance standpoint. You know, if if if, if four three hundred pound people show up, can the flight go? So there's multiple redundancies uh, which we follow closely, and that increases the envelope for safety because we are flying in very challenging weather. We're doing a number of flights every day, especially in the summer, down to minimums. You know, we we're going down to two hundred feet on approaches, so we need we're to here. have that all buttoned up. Yeah. Okay. What's the vision here of Hopscotch Air? So the vision has always been, and it got curtailed during COVID, certainly. The vision has always been, we believe that we can put a hundred of these aircraft in the Northeast alone and in the summer fly them every day. We also believe it's a nationwide product that it can work in any market in the United States, even in areas like North Dakota, where the weather is poor. So the goal and the vision of the company really is not just to provide a quote alternative, because I hate that word, to airline travel, but to provide a new option uh, for people in their flight, uh, in their travel profile. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you're, if you're taking this one step further and you're thinking about, you know, the way that this impacts, you know, customers, are you, are you imagining this is becoming a more, you know, if you're, if we're looking even more generally, uh, the industry is becoming a more mainstream event. Is this thing with a specific demographic? That's because a lot of people are talking about air taxis as you know becoming something somewhat of a more you know common phenomenon. I know it, in the United Arab Emirates, they're talking a lot about this. Uh -huh. You know, you're living the industry. Well, what are you experiencing there in terms of the consumers? And, and by the way, we've had a number of talks with uh, members at the UAE about this. Our experience is that the regional travel. Uh, business needs to be solved in the United States. So there's no good train service in this country. There's Amtrak will take you to New York to Boston, but if you're traveling anywhere else, 
you know, from New York to Boston, New York to Washington, the train service is, is spotty. The roads, the infrastructure all right, is, is a disaster, right? So there's all this effort to fix the roads. So the real solution is air travel. And that's why you're seeing a number of companies with these EV tolls, electric VTOLs. Uh, but I don't personally believe the battery power is going to be there for a decade or so. So you need solutions to take people off the road. Uh, that is where the real environmental impact is happening in this country, is that there's too many cars on the road uh, and stuck in traffic and polluting the, the polluting all the air. That solution can yeah. be resolved through travel, through air travel. Got it. Tell me a little bit about your, you know, I'm going back to that initial question. And, you know, the show, then it's all about, you know, leadership and, and why you do what you do. Why do you do what you do? <laughs> so it's a very good question because there are a lot of easier ways to make money. I'll tell you that. Uh, there, there is the I'm dedication sure. and, and the drive to to build a business. Because of my connection to aviation, this is a space that interests me. Uh, when we talk to shareholders and when we talk to potential investors, we say that this is a market that can grow and can be profitable. It is not going to be a tech company, though, because you can't scale it like a tech company. They, they, you, need, you need airplanes and you need pilots, and there's, there's, there's a shortage of both right now. And so we need to resolve those issues. I also enjoy the challenge. So the challenge is really kind of what gets me up in the morning. I like problems. And there's problems every day. It's kind of a, you kind yeah, of wake sure. up and it's a jigsaw puzzle and all the pieces <laughs> are all spread out all over the floor. Every morning, you put the thing together piece by piece by piece. And then at night, you know, your dog wrecks the whole thing and you have to start all over again. <laughs> I enjoy that. And as, and even though you tire in doing that and you need to hire and work with great people who can support you, uh, I enjoy that process. Well, what is the biggest challenge that you're experiencing perhaps in the day to day? Is there as a big one? Is it a bunch of small ones as a business owner of such a company? Uh, there's both big ones and small ones. Uh, the big one right now is the problem that all airlines are facing, which is there's a worldwide pilot shortage and it's really come home to roost. It's been in the making for more than a decade. But now if you want to be a pilot and you are a pilot, you can write your own ticket, literally. However, it's a long process. The process is not going to get solved tomorrow because pilots need to go through a lot of training and you have to have a certain number of hours. So that 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 is a limiting factor on any business is can you hire enough crew members to conduct flights? That's the big picture uh, problem. The other challenges will include regulations. There's regulatory challenges all the time, but we well, we meet that um, those challenges. And you know, every day run of the mill business challenges are in competition. You know, when people when you know, when you talk with people and and they say, well, you know, I I, I can drive. Uh, I there's cheaper options of getting there. So there's all of those challenges uh, challenges occur in the United States right now. We have a challenge that the airports that we be largely operate out of, and we can fly into any big airport. We fly into JFK, LaGuardia. Tel Aviv all the time, <laughs> um, not Tel Aviv, but the, um, uh, the, the, the real challenges are, are the airport space. There's not enough concrete. Uh, so the, yeah. so the, 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 run, the, the space at the airports is becoming a challenge as well. I love it. And if you are, are looking at yourself from a, from a leadership perspective, what is it like being a leader of an organization that is doing what you're doing? I mean, you're leading pilots. Which, uh, you know, I remember when uh, we were doing you know, some the theory, theoretical work on pilot, you know, they say, you know, it's like 70% of the errors are human errors, right? Yeah. When it comes to, to pilot. And, and the other thing that was pretty remarkable was there was a question, at least in the Israeli one, was what, what are the most, uh, you know, uh, the most common traits for a pilot? And, and one of them was sort of like this know it all mentality, which I guess sort of makes sense sure. in a lot of ways, yeah. but. Well, so, so how do you lead, you know, with a group that is perhaps is a little bit more difficult to lead? Uh, you prove to them that you're smarter than they are. <laughs> it, nah. it is a challenge. It is a challenge. Pilots, pilots uh, are certainly a little bit cocky. Uh, they are highly trained professionals. They are excellent at their jobs. But I also know pilots who are excellent, you know, stick and rudder pilots and you can trust them with your family. Uh, but they can't tie their shoelaces outside of the airplane. You lead by 
You lead by providing a culture, a good culture, a culture of respect. I say to every pilot who comes into the organization, let me know what else you want to do in this business because there's a number of other things. So if you don't want to be a pilot at the end of the day, maybe we can, maybe you can do a different job. We want to have and show respect to all members of the, of the Hopscotch Air team. And it is about building a culture that is sustainable. And that's where the airlines failed over the last decade and a half or so. Their culture was, we're going to pay you and you're going to show up and do a job. And when fuel prices go up, we're going to fire you. That was the culture. There was very little investment in the pilots. And they're, and they're paying the price for that now because pilots stop being pilots, right? They, and they stop needing new pilots. So I'm, and, and, that, and that is true with any business. You need to establish a good culture. One where there's respect, where there's understanding, where you pay well. And we pay pretty well for our size company and our size aircraft, but we can't compete with Delta Airlines, of course. So we, we expect pilots to stay 18 months and then move on. That's fine. Because we want them happy because they will refer their friends who are coming up in the ranks to our company. And building a, a, building a, 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 a culture is, is essential. It's also essential from a safety standpoint. You need to have a culture of safety. So you have to empower a pilot to never be afraid to cancel a flight. Wonderful. Amazing journey, Andrew. That's such a cool job that you have. Really, thank, thank you, you so much for coming here for these 20 minutes. I really appreciate it. I, I wishing, wishing you best of luck with this journey. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to cheering from the side. So thank you very, very much. And stay safe and stay healthy. Come to New York, come to New York and we'll go flying. Thank you, I'm Michael. Coming to New York in five, I'm coming to New York in six days. This is on record. Oh. We're going okay. flying. <laughs> looking forward to it, Andrew. I'll see you right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, thank you thank very, you, very thank much. Thank you, Michael.